30 seconds to on air. Okay, and you are just here. Good night. Sit farther back. Now, an extraordinary story about a young man who many years ago visited Prague. What he found there were thousands of refugees at the mercy of Hitler's imminent invasion. So when Cecil came to me with this script, in fact, they sent me in an email the script and a link to that YouTube thing if I hadn't seen it. That combination, because what it gives a filmmaker, um, obviously there's a, there's a little bit of appeal and an awareness in an audience potentially of that story, but it also gives the film a destination. You know what the end is and you know what your character can aim towards, that moment of release, that moment of catharsis. So I could see somewhere that I could shape a story and a performance. That's so interesting. And I just wondered, you know, obviously having that clip out there in the world and how widely it's been seen, how did you kind of approach creating that in the film? Um, was that a particularly challenging scene to film? Well, it, it was challenging and that made us a challenge to myself because I didn't want to just replicate shot by shot what is seen on screen. Now, obviously, what is known out there is a piece of broadcast television, a very important piece of broadcast history. Um, but we arrive at it differently. I wanted to feel it as, as Nicky's experience. So we come into the scene, handheld camera on his shoulder, discovering the studio in a world that is alien to him. He doesn't know about this place. He's about to be ambushed. So we were very careful to experience it with the character rather than from, if you like, Esther's point of view or the gallery point of view across the studio floor. Um, so when he is introduced to one of the children he saved, rather than see that from the pedestal camera's point of view, we tuck in over his shoulder and make it an intimate moment. So I try to engineer it um, to be a different experience uh, that was governed by the emotion rather than just the recording of the event. Do you ever think about the children and what happened to them? Oh, I bet you got some stories. That's really not about me. We are working to evacuate these children by train to safety in Britain. Why are you doing this, Mr. Winton? Because I may be able to do something about it. I must. I knew nothing about her at all. Um, she, you know, she never saw any kind of recognition for her contribution in, in, in World War II or any of the other many, many amazing things she achieved in her life. Um, you know, she's a real exemplar of like, you know, the incredible, the kind of incredible life that w a woman will lead and then <laughs> never tell anybody about it. Um, but um, she, luckily she wrote quite full diaries that you can access of her time in the war. And also uh, there was a book, one book written about her, which I was able to read. Um, so I was able to find out, you know, all about, you know, her life going to Cambridge in the 1920s and becoming an economist and, you know, traveling through Europe in the 1930s, becoming an economist and then working for the British Committee for Refugees and saving hundreds of people's lives in the war. And, you know, all of the incredible, um, I, I mean, yeah, extraordinary achievements of her life. Yeah, yeah, it's really quite incredible. She's a fantastic woman, and um, thank you. And I understand that you filmed quite a lot of this in real locations, particularly um, like Prague train station was one that I saw a picture of, and it must have been quite evocative doing that. So how was that for you, um, yeah, being in these real locations where these events actually happened? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think um, there are m moments uh, in your life as an actor where you you feel the, you know, tremendous weight of responsibility to tell a story uh, well, to tell it accurately. Um, and, you know, when you're standing dressed as somebody standing on the actual platform of the actual station where they, you know, gathered up hundreds and hundreds of children put them on their on these trains having spent months trying to get them visas and campaign for money to support their travel find host families for them you know to save their lives you know it was it was deeply emotional filming those scenes and i you know i found it very difficult to shoot them because it was just so overwhelming um but you know an incredible um you know one of the great sort of privileges of my life to get to, to do that anthony was I'll go back a bit. Barbara Winton, mm. uh, mm -hmm. Nick, Nicky's daughter and biographer, 
when she gave permission to Seesaw Films to make this project, said, uh, but you need to cast Anthony Hopkins, which is a pretty big ask, you know, one of the most in-demand actors of his generation. Um, so then it was a question of would Tony respond to the script and indeed be willing to work with this director? And thankfully, yes, was the answer to all of those things. And then you had to find an actor who could be the younger him. Um, I'd worked with Johnny before. Nina Gold, our rather brilliant uh, casting director, saw him. Obviously, he's got a similar physicality, that sort of stockiness and strength. He also has a very quiet, generous performance um, style that we felt would be absolutely sympathetic to what we wanted Tony and Nikki to be. Um, mm -hmm. And then they talked a lot together and uh, Johnny came to the set when Tony was doing the earlier scenes, watched him sort of reverse engineered um, that performance and what the younger version of it would be. Mm -hmm. That's great, thank you. And um, I just wondered about the filming process. You know, I saw some images of the set at Prague railway station with like the Nazi flags. It was quite an arresting image. And I just wondered how much you filmed in real locations and what that was like. Well, you picked Prague, Stra Sta Prague Station, so let's talk about that one. I mean, that was incredibly evocative. I'm looking at an image of it just off camera at the moment. And it's, um, it, it was literally that platform from where the kids left um, 84, 85 years ago. Um, so uh, hugely evocative to be there. Now, <clears throat> on the night before the filming with the Nazis being there, the art department were uh, prepping the flags and putting them up. Um, and people didn't know this was for a film. And so powerful is that image, as you can imagine, in Prague, um, that there were complaints and the police were called and uh, armed police responded in a hurry because they thought it was some sort of far-right demo going on. Um, so we had to calm things down a bit and explain what was happening. Um, in the palette of the film, I have almost no red. We took it out of costume, we take it out of almost everything. And then when it comes, it comes largely because of the Nazi flag. So it punches through and it does on that set. Um, there was a moment when we, we dramatize uh, one of the trains with the Nazis coming on board and um, we have all the kids there and we deliberately didn't tell the children exactly what was going to happen to get the, a very um, visceral response from them. As they walked down the side of the trains, banging on the side, telling them to get off, get off. And you can imagine the shock and the response, and it spread right across the station. There is just something now wired into us of what that means and, and what, the, what that rhythm, what that sound signifies in our history. I just think, you know, we, we live in an age of increasing fear. I mean, the film depicts a time in the 1930s where, you know, well, unemployment was very high in Britain at the time. You know, there was a lot of fear about immigration and, you know, that fear is here with us now. And um, I just think you have to make the argument all the time because it goes against the human instinct to welcome outsiders that new people contribute massively to the country that you live in. Every single person, I mean, this film's, you know, the title of this film, One Life, any human being can change the world so much for the better. And if you're open to people and open to what they can contribute, then it can be such a powerful force for, for good for you as an individual, for your family, for your culture and your country. And that isn't an argument I think people can afford to ever stop making. That's never gonna go away. It just re needs to be, that argument needs to be remade every generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, thank you. And um, when did you first hear about Nicholas Winton? Um, you know, when did you first kind of come across his story? He's such an incredible man, um, yeah. There have been articles about him. I was, I was sort of, I have definitely read an article about him when I was sent the script and I was, I was aware of his name and I had seen the, the clip. Um, so I was aware of that, of that moment in kind of TV history where he was suddenly dragged very unwillingly out of um, sort of self-imposed obscurity into, into the limelight. And, you know, I was aware of what he represented in that sense of a, a generation of people who didn't, who, you know, nowadays, of course, you know, anytime you have a moment which you, you feel proud of, you immediately tell everybody, you know, that it was a generation where that was very frowned upon, you know, and I, I knew that he sort of represented those values. And, um, but I think the actual work that they did and the, how incredibly hard it was to save those children's lives, how 
deeply and genuinely they risked their lives um, to bring them to Britain. I don't think I was really aware of that. And so the film was an incredible opportunity for me to, to know that story much more intimately. Nikki, you must know we cannot save them all. You have to forgive yourself that. I'm starting, sir. I have to finish it. We cannot let these people down. It is incredible what you achieved. We're doing as much as we can. You have a lot of faith in ordinary people. Because I'm an ordinary person. Save one life, save the world. Uh, forgive me, but how many children are we speaking about? Can I ask, is there anyone in the audience tonight who owes their life to Nicholas Winton?